Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making this cool little uh, alien plant thingy and um, it's completely procedural and uh, it's using most blinds and a bunch of different deformers and yeah let's jump right in. Cool let's grab two spheres like so and then with the first, the first sphere, change the radius to 25, and the second one, change it to 15. And just change that up a little bit, something like that. And then let's just group both these spheres. Rename the group to spheres. And then just move the group up a little bit. Awesome. Next, we want to go into MoGraph and grab a Mo spline. And then under Angle P, change that. 90 and then let's grab a inside and then a sweep cool. now let's put the inside and the sweep uh, inside and most line inside the sweep and then um, under the most line just change the width to five centimeters cool and so the most spline doesn't drive you nuts turn the visibility off and just on the spline and then under the width if you uh, expand it like I have here, just select both those spline points, right click and change the point type to soft. So now let's just control the tape a little bit. So that tapers off nicely and just changes to how you like it. Um, I'm going to add a little point in the middle there just by control clicking. And then on the left, let's just change that so they just Makes a nice little curve there. Cool, kind of like that. Awesome, and uh, actually I'll just make it a little thicker. Awesome. Now under the curve here, this just change it to 360, and then expand expand it so you have this little spline curve here. Select both of them, right click, and go soft again. Now just move the left one over. Like so, and now you get this cool little curve. It kind of reminds me of like a fern would be in New Zealand. Cool. Um, and just change the display so you can see the lines. Um, cool. I'm just going to add a few div divisions on the inside. So that's a little bit smoother. Yeah, that looks good. Awesome. Now we want to grab a cloner and put that sweep inside the cloner. Change the under the object tab. Change the mode to radio, radi, radial, and then change the plane to X Z. So they're all facing upwards. And change the radius to something like eight. Yeah, kind of like that. And change the count to something like seven. And then. Um, under the most line, we just want to fix the angle that this is this curve is on. So under angle B, just change that to 270. So they're all facing outwards. Awesome. That's a nice starting point. Just remember to save your file so you don't lose everything. Alien plant tutorial. I'm just going to save everything. Cool, so now what we want to do is add a little bit of twist to these stems. So if you go into the deformer menu, just grab a twist deformer. Cool. And then we want to grab a connect object and put that cloner and the twist inside the connect object. Cool. And the reason why we have that connect object is if we disable it, and go to the twist and press fit to parent that won't work because uh, it's it can't figure out what the parent is and so if you just enable the connect object now and now fit the parent that works and uh, let's just change the angle on the twist to something like 360 yeah and then just turn the visibility of the twist off cool that's a good starting point and then um, what we want to do is we want to find out a way of bending these stems so that they go around the edge of the spheres. 
Oh, but before we go on, we actually want to select the connect object and turn off wild so nothing happens, nothing weird happens with our geometry. And then also, we want to select these spheres and change the type to icosahedron. Um, I just prefer to use that. Um, yeah, anyway, so let's just go into the deformity and now grab a collision deformer and put that just below the twist. Um, so, with the collision deformant selected, what I want to do is go into the colliders tab and add both spheres into there. And now we got messed up geometry. <laughs> um, but it's an easy fix, so if you just go to the advanced tab on the collision object and just change the stretch to 125, that fixes it instantly. So that's that's awesome. And now just change the size to zero. That way it should get rid of this little gap, um, but sometimes the collision object doesn't update unless you press play. So there we go. Awesome. That is exactly what we want. Now, what we, um, something else we want <laughs> is we want to add some variation into these stems into the size of the stems and so with that client selected go into the MoGraph menu effectors and click on the, the random effector um, under parameters just turn off the position parameter and enable the scale and uh, tick uniform scale and then now just add something like 0.25 Yeah, that's a good amount. Now you'll see we've got a weird glitch here, and that's because our twist doesn't automatically resize. And so what we're going to do is just click on Fit to Parent again. And voila. Awesome. So just uh, turn that twist back off. And just to keep things tidy, let's just grab it now. Put that random and that connect in there. And let's just rename that now to main stem. Or stems, because there's more than one stem. Cool. That looks pretty good. Now, um, what we want to do is we want to start working on these little stems with our little spike balls. And uh, it's starts off pretty similar to how we did these main stems so under the main stem uh, expand the connect object and the clone it and just copy that sweep object and paste cool now just turn off um just turn off the collision and the twist because sometimes they just use up uses up a bit of memory and makes things slow and just turn off spheres and the main stems Cool. Now with this uh, most spline, we just want to make that a bit small. So let's just go with something like 50. Nope, that's way too small. 35. Mm, maybe 100. Cool. And then um, under the width, maybe make that just a little bit thinner. And just fix the shape up a little bit. And under the curve, we just want to move this left um, point just over to the left and up a little bit. And then just reduce that curve so it's not so intense. So something like that seems to work pretty well. Yeah, cool. Now what we want to do is put that sweep. Actually, no, let's just let's keep that as is. And then... Let's start working on these little spike ball thingies. So the way you start that out is by grabbing a sphere. Um, change the, the type to icosahedron. And um, then you want to grab a bevel and put that inside the sphere. And with the bevel, just change the offset to something like 15 is fine. 
and then just click the limit option. And that way we get these cool little hexagons, which I, I use this all the time. I love that. And uh, cool. Then what we're gonna do is go into the MoGraph tab and grab a Mo Extrude. Now let's just grab a null, put the sphere and the Mo Extrude inside that. Ah, but we have a little problem here. You can see we've got some weird geometry going on. And the reason that's happening is because the bevel's leaving like double edges. So what we want to do is put that sphere object inside another connector object, like so. And cool. So that means that welds those points together made by the bevel and we got some clean geometry. Now under the mark extrude, under transform, we want to change the scales to something like 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And then change the position to something like 20. Um, now if you go back to the object tab um, and change the transform to per step, then you get more of an exponential fall off and that looks a lot better cool so now we just want to add some randomization to these spikes so if you go into the MoGraph effector and add a ram random effector cool and so go to the parameters and under the position X and Y just put that as zero and as the position Z just maybe change it to something like 10 so that that changes like the size of the spikes. So, oops, it's yeah, something like tens. Pretty cool. And then let's add some random rotation. So that, so this, the random effector is and adding this. Well, it's it's adding this randomization to each step here, and so it just adds on and. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So add 10 degrees and the H, P, and maybe 30. So 30 will change the like twist. I mean, the last one will change the twist. Like so. And I quite like that. That, that looks pretty cool. Now we just want to grab a subdivision surface and put the um, no inside that so things are a little bit smoother and nicer and then just so that it's not too high poly just change that to one subdivision like so cool and then just group that and so it's nice and tidy and call it spike ball nice um, and now we have our spike ball and we have our little stem so we just gotta get the spike ball on the stem. And the way you do that is by grabbing a cloner and put the spike ball in the cloner and select the cloner, change the mode to object. Now just disable the cloner because otherwise you could crash your computer if you do this wrong. And so just expand the sweep and add the most line to the object. So then you change the count to one, and now, now you can e enable the cloner. So you just get one cloner per stem. And um, obviously it's way too big, so go into the transforms on the cloner object and just change it to like 0 0.05, maybe? Yeah, maybe that's a little too small, so 0.0, .0 5, yeah, I like that. That's looking pretty cool. And now on the um, cloner object, just go to the object tab and change the start position to 99.9%. .9%. So that way it's just going to move right to the end of the stem, like so. And I quite like that. That's looking cool. Now, uh, what we want to do is, now we want to clone that into, like a, we want a radial cloner like we did with the main stems. 
So go into MoGraph, grab a cloner, and um, actually we want this this cloner and this sweep grouped. So uh, grab a null, like so, and then put that null inside the cloner. Cool, and change the mode to radial. Change the plan to XZ, and change the radius to something like 20. And then up the count, something like seven. Awesome, that's looking pretty cool. Now we just want to um, randomize the size of that a little bit. So under MoGraph effectors, add a random effector. And so, change the parameters so that it doesn't go on the y-axis and then just change the x and z to like 5 it just adds a little randomization on the position but on the scale we want to add a uniform scale to like 0 0.25 yeah that's looking nice awesome so now if we turn back on our main stems and our spheres expand the main stems and enable the twist and the collision we got a cool little alien plot going on and I quite like that it's looking good um, just with these little stems I think I'm just gonna rotate them, rotate them out just a little bit so just select that cloner just go to transform and change it to something like that. That's looking a little bit better. Awesome. Now let's just make another now and put that cloner and the random inside here and call it small stems. Cool, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. It's looking nice and alien-y. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. That basically concludes the modeling part of this tutorial. So I will be posting another one that makes, that shows you how to make it look like this. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial.